I'm not the house of cards that falls down easily. Oh, I'm strong enough to handle what you throw at me. Welcome to Mental Health News Radio. I'm your host, Kristen Sunanta Walker. Just what are we going to discuss? The intimacy that is mental health. Let's continue to make it as comfortable as discussing brain health or heart health. This show has been on the air for several years and we have amazing co-hosts. And then we created a network of podcasters on mentalhealthnewsradionetwork.com, a place where every possible facet of mental well-being can be talked about openly. My show, after several hundred interviews, the format is this. Intimate, deep, funny, touching, sometimes uncomfortable, but always vulnerable conversations with interesting people. The goal is to have you, our listening family, many of you who have become my good friends, feel as though you are listening in on private conversations. Thank you for tuning in and becoming part of this amazing journey with me and now with our network of podcasters. Just knowing this podcast might be helping any of you realize you are not alone on this journey called being a human being makes doing this podcast worth every second. Hi, everyone. We are here with one of the other podcasters on Mental Health News Radio Network, Ryan McCormick. Ryan, thanks for coming on the show. Christian, it is an honor to be with you and Martha. I am so thankful that, uh, you know, despite the fact that I am not the best looking guy, you still decided to have me on your show anyway, which shows <laughs> that uh, that's awesome. That is very wonderful. So I thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Ryan hosts the Outer Limits of Inner Truth radio show, and he's one of those people that I can go to, and I can literally, it doesn't matter how bizarre the question might be, Ryan is not going to freak out. (laughs) He's a good friend to have then. (laughs) Yes. Ryan and Martha, both two people I can say, well, I think that this, this, and this, and they're not going to go, I think we should... Uh, have an intervention and call in her family and have her locked up. So let's talk about different meds and things like that. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that's great. So Good to see you again, Ryan. By the way, you too. You Thank too. You. The world has uh, changed. You know, we we talk one day, now we talk again, and yes. uh, we're we're in the apocalypse. So uh, <laughs> the apocalypse. <laughs> It's quite amazing, and I know both of you have, you know, been putting a lot of great information and a lot of wonderful shows to people out there, empowering them. So I don't know. I'd just like to ask you both, if possible, to say what are some of the biggest trends that both of you are seeing in the world today? And as sometimes we we hear that the world's going darker, or maybe this is the dark before the light. So I'm just curious how both of you guys perceive the world right now. Okay. Um, Christian, do you want to go first? Or? No, you go first. <laughs> I go first. <laughs> All right. Um, well, it, it's very tempting to look at everything and uh, translate it through the lens of fear. There is certainly enough out there that if you're inclined to be a fearful person, you know, that, that will feed that fear. My thinking on it, however, is that before there is any kind of a major paradigm shift or change, and and this is, you can look back and see this historically, uh, there's always a period of chaos. And I think we're in that period of chaos right now. I know we're in a period of chaos where, where nothing makes sense really anymore. And everything that we used to think was normal is no longer in existence. And, you know, we have choices that we can make right now. And I think we're being asked to make those choices about how we want to proceed moving forward. You know, do we want to stay locked into the fear? Do we want to ride the wave of fear into the future and see what that manifests as in our world? Or do we want to go a different route and go the way of the heart? And, and, you know, look at things differently, change our perspective on, on what's good and normal. And I think this is our opportunity right now to, you know, look into ourselves, find out who we are, 
And uh, what is it that we are here to bring forward? Because we're all here to bring something forward uh, out of ourselves. And that's how I'm seeing it right now. I don't like all of this stuff that's going on. You know, I have a, several buttons that, that tend to get pushed uh, these days. And it's, a, it's a, a real task to, to uh, remove yourself from that kind of reactive uh, thing and just remember why we're here, remember who we are, and remember what we can do and just move forward in that uh, mode of thinking. That's what I think is going on right now. Mm. Kristen, what do you feel? Um, what think about it? Because I mean, it's, it's one thing I always find. One thing that's really amazing is that you have such a firm grasp on human psychology. I you do. Also have a deep, <laughs> deep your connection with it with the spiritual, and I think it's yeah. wonderful because some, some we see a lot of people that uh, tend to be totally academic, and we have some people that are totally right in metaphysics. But I think very rarely you have a nice, a perfect balance. So, how do you see things? Mm. I know I had somebody say to me yesterday, you are the most mentally healthy person in this whole group. And I looked at them and I said, well, that is a sad state of affairs about the reality of this group. <laughs> so, um, I, what do I think? Everything Martha said, of course, um, not that remember listeners, I don't call her and say, should I wipe in front to back or back to front today? What is it, Martha? That's, okay. I don't do that. <laughs> no, she does not. Does <laughs> even, even though I call, you know, yes, Martha is the person that I call. Um, I, oh gosh, so many things. I have felt really guided and even unconsciously to be very protected during this time. Um, I, I moved to a new place, not far from you, you know, Ryan, and um, yeah. closer to Martha, always better. And have been like, why in the hell did I move here? You know, this there's all kinds of problems here. <laughs> what is this about? But it is very safe for me here. It's very insulated. Um, and I think I needed that. I think really empathic people are just feeling <laughs> the weight of what's going on. And it is taking, if not most of us, all of us to our knees at different times. And I think about what Martha has shared. And I definitely want to get into that a little bit where, you know, Martha, you had said, well, possibly, you know, Earth, this experience here is not supposed to be any different than it is. It, this is a testing ground. It's kind of like every day is Groundhog Day. And, and it's up to us to learn how to evolve ourselves and our souls while we're here in high schools, kind of, you know, a place that's never going to really, really be more than, than that kind of an experience. And so what I have found is the match to that with the people that I have to deal with every day, physically deal with every day and how to really work on my personal, um, I don't wanna say boundaries, my personal energy field, my, uh, how I, the thoughts I think in my head, the anxiety, the, the overdoing it in my head, the villainizing someone, not villainizing them. How do you live every day seeing someone? Like it's, it's gotten very narrow for me and, on that same path, I've also had all these health issues come up where my biggest health issue is that my body is inflamed. Now, is that not exactly what empaths are going through right now? The oh, world, yes. The world yes. is inflamed. And guess what? So are we physically yeah, and right. emotionally. And so I am doing everything I can to treat myself with loving kindness and to pat myself on the back for the things that I don't do anymore that were very unhealthy. I'm eating so pristinely well, which helps the inflammation go down. I'm, I'm having to really choose to be conscious about how I care for myself in a way that I never have before and in a way of doing it just for me, not for some other person, not for what I think I should look like, just for me. And that I have to say, I'm thankful for everything that's going on because it's, it's 
it's forced me to do that. So I can't say that this is a bad, you know, experience for me just because of what it's for the internal work it's forced me to do. Well, that's awesome. It's awesome. You have a positive perspective on it. And, and how on. about you, Ryan? What yeah, what you about you? What do you think? All right. <laughs> I believe that this coronavirus, this whole thing, yeah, it's probably not going to be the most positive response, but I think that it is, I think there are people that are purposely exploiting and magnifying the fear about mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. in order to bring humanity under control. Because I think when people are in fear, they can be more controlled. And I think one of the things that this coronavirus does, by putting this out on a regular basis, it brings to the surface something deep within the minds of people that they don't like to talk about, and that is death. And that is the fundamental fear, I think, that all people have of death. Because as a spirit in a human body, your number one priority is to do whatever you can to, to stay alive. And when you're constantly being shown, like we watch the news and we see, okay, well, something horrible happened. There was an accident. There was a tragedy. People don't really feel connected to people. But when there's a push every day in fear about a pandemic or something that could potentially kill you, and I think that people are being faced with that fear of death in a way that they probably have never done before. I think it's the unknown, the uncertainty that is causing that fear to, to happen. And I almost feel that that fear is causing other things to occur. So... I wonder if humanity were to be confronted and to have a, a big major breakthrough as far as what death is and if they can really talk to more people who've experienced a near-death experience and come to the realization that, okay, well, death is going to happen. It's going to happen 100% of us. And then it's at the end, a lot of people have come back and say, it's beautiful. I wonder if that would alleviate it. But this uh, constant state of fear that humanity, I think, is being pushed into is, I feel in a lot of ways, is very disempowering. It's putting people in a place where they're not getting the um, the attention that they need. I think we need to hug each other. I think we need to be around and be more social. And the lack of that, having that be cut off, having uh, dreams be pushed off or you know postponed it definitely is definitely having a, a negative effect. Um, I, I, I do foresee this being something that some people will walk through, they'll become stronger. I do also foresee that this is something that's going to put people uh, in a very precarious position for the remainder of their lives. There's gonna be a lot of trauma that comes from this. The only thing I do hope for is I do hope that those who are the, uh, I think the few who are um, really trying to push will be able to utilize their strength and inspire love, hope, and compassion in others and hope that we do push through this. But um, I don't like this nonstop fear out there. I think humanity should be working towards inspiring hope in each other instead of pushing for fear because I think fear in one way, it's kind of like um, it's, it's a dirty emotion that is being utilized way way too much there's a healthy amount of it but then there's just too much of it and i, I feel like in one way that the population of the world is addicted to fear i don't know that's just my perception i, I have to agree with you on uh the addiction to fear yeah and um uh, you know it's it, it's absolutely uh true that the chemicals and hormones that we secrete in the fight or flight situation inside of our body, they, they are addictive. And we have become so accustomed to doing business uh, in, in a certain way in our lives and uh, with each other that, you know, we don't pay attention to what's going on until it becomes really, really scary and at that point, we feel that we have zero control over anything, you know, and what you said about the, the COVID virus, uh, you know, we really don't have any control over uh, a simple virus. Um, it's going to go where it's going to go and it's going to kill who it's going to kill. But, you know, I'll go back to it again. And Ryan, this is something that, that you were alluding to. We have to reevaluate who we are moving forward. Are we people who are going to remain stuck in this uh, vortex of fear? Or are we going to do what we need to do to uh, awaken uh, better angels in ourselves? 
Are we going to start looking at things differently and looking at each other differently? And, and I think that the salvation, if I can use that word, uh, for all of us is to learn how to abandon fear. You know, fear is, is good in certain mm. circumstances. When you're walking through the, uh, the, the jungle and you hear a big animal behind you growling, if you're not afraid, you're nuts. And so in situations, yeah, okay, let's be, let's keep that, that uh, uh, response where it should be. But most of the things that we're afraid of now, if you think about it, are things that are in our heads. Yes. Things that are in our imagination, things that have happened, things that might happen. If you take, if you stop and, and, and take a look at where you are at any given moment in time, and really evaluate your surroundings, unless you've got a tiger, you know, about to pounce, or you have this, you know, six foot tall virus ready to take over your world. What do you have to be afraid of in this moment? Ask yourself that. And, you know, are you safe? Are you in a safe place? If you're not, then you have to be afraid. But most of what we're afraid of is in our heads, honestly. Absolutely. Yeah, that one. So, you know, we have to really get serious with ourselves and say, all right, what are we going to take into the next moment? What are we going to take into the next day? What are we going to take into the next week? Are we going to take this, this uh, proclivity towards imaginary monsters or are we going to use our heads and, and evaluate things and then use our heart to learn how to, to live out of that energy. And, and that's how we change ourselves and that's how we change the world. But we have to stop scaring ourselves and each other. You know, look at the news. Oh, my. <laughs> you know, if that doesn't send it's a shiver such- down your spine. Non- stop. Yeah. And also there's a website called Next. If you're ever going to a website called nextdoor.com, it's where you can engage with all your neighbors and you see, like, you just watch the fear of happening yeah. there. I think it's. What's it called again? Next door. Ne- yeah, next nextdoor.com. You can basically connect with thousands of your, your neighbors and then you'll see what, oh. what they're discussing about. And then you see, I'm at least in my experience when I'm doing it, I see people getting all upset about the little things. Yeah. I don't want to know. I will not be no. going to next door. <laughs> I get enough of that well, with Facebook. And you know what? I I went, I'm gonna I'll shut up in a second, Ryan. I I I hear what's right. going on with my neighbors on Facebook and I have unfriended quite a few of them because I just, I don't want to know how vile you are on social media and then have to wake up in the morning and see you in the barn as I'm taking care of my horse. You know, I just, I don't want to know those things. So this neighborhood has like a chat that you're, that they really want you to be on. And I've taken myself on it many, uh, taken myself off of it a few times. And I finally took myself off of it permanently and had someone say, Oh, please go back on. And I said, you know what? I do not want people that I really just, I would never hang out with them. I don't like being in their presence and it's okay to not like people because, you know, they don't like me either. It's not like I'm, you know, but I I don't, exactly. I don't want their chat bubble popping up on my phone. That's my phone. Why would I want that? So I finally said, stop asking me to join something. I don't want to know what these people think. They live 20 yards from me or 50 yards or whatever. I I don't, I don't want to know that they, Whatever. But anyway, I'm sorry about that, Ryan. But yeah, that's what next door door seems like that to me. Like, oh, God, (laughs) you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I I enjoyed doing it. One of the things I love to do, one of my secret uh, guilty pleasures is not ice cream. It's arguing. I love to argue with people. I just enjoy it. I just enjoy it so much. And then (laughs) I just love it. I enjoy, it's just fun. It's, it's, let's it's let's reframe rush. that. Let's reframe yeah, let's that. Let's reframe it because you're saying we're going to say joy you here. you like to debate. Yeah, arguing oh, makes arguing you sound like different. you're unpleasant. Oh, okay. Arguing, yeah, debate. Yeah, enjoy yeah, debate. Yeah, debate. You like to debate because you're yeah. one like of the most pleasant like people to... that I know. So well, I could see you like to debate, but not argue. Well, I work with a gentleman at one point, and he was telling me he's like, you know what? He's like, so a lot of people when they go in and they and they debate, they they're always trying to win. He's like, no. He's like, what you want to do is you want to put nuggets of information within their mind, 
So they'll reflect on what you said later, and they and they may or may not change. But as long as you cast uh, doubt in some of the disempowering beliefs that they've had, or you you plant the seed for an empowering belief, that's more than you can ever do than than win. Mm-hmm. I thought that, and I, I've always taken away from that a really powerful um, – that really had a pow- powerful impact on me because I, I don't – I used to be really trying to win, go for the kill. And I'm just like, no, I, t- I just want to plant a seed and that. But um, I'd love to ask you both a, a question about beliefs because right now you look at the world and you see a lot of people – okay, everyone, a lot of people are afraid or a lot of people are, are modifying their behavior because they don't want to get sick. They don't want to – be in a position where they're going to die or they don't want to harm, harm other people. But are there any beliefs that they could incorporate into their lives that would allow them to see the world in a different perspective to go wider that would allow them to, let's say, for example, not have all that fear? I'll give you one example of this. Talking to some of the people that have uh, had, that had near-death experiences, they're like, when you come into the life, your human is your car. You are the spirit. You are driving the car. So this is your human, and this is the coursework that you are doing, and this is your course. And you, then you leave, and you, you get another human, and you take it for another spin in another lifetime in another course. And that kind of made me feel like, all right, well, I don't take life so seriously because of that. But uh, Kristen, is there any uh, fundamental beliefs or uh, perspectives that would allow that you think would allow a person to go wider, wider that would allow them to, to be above the fear? And see beyond the scope of what the news is trying to present. As oh the, my uh, God! Yeah, I mean, reality. You mean like what? What's a fundamental difference in that kind of a person that is able to do that? Or yeah, like what are so some of the beliefs? or some beliefs that a person can pick up? I mean, based on hmm. saying, well, if you if you accept this concept, that means that opens the door to all these other concepts. So I mean, oh, I think that's just, so. That's very hard. How have I been able? I could only look to myself. How have I been able to do that? Um, just being a seeker, you know, constantly be, and being a debater like you, I like that much better than arguing because I definitely have been called that an arguer. Um, like, no, I'm not going to believe that. You mean to tell me, I had somebody tell, you mean to tell me that if an Aborigine in the middle of Australia that has never met any white person ever doesn't believe in Jesus, that they are going to hell? Is that, I did this with a Bible thumper. And he was like, absolutely. And I was just like, uh, okay, I'm done. <laughs> but uh, I think, you know, I watched this happen, actually. I think that your care to have empathy, to cultivate your empathy is a prime um, gift that you can have that will help you get past yourself, get past your beliefs, get past what the news is trying to tell you. Cause I actually did a show with a very, very religious right wing Christian and a white guy and a black guy who's also a Christian, definitely not right wing. He works, uh, he's like TD Jakes's right hand man. And I had them come together to do a show. And let me tell you, I had a stomach ache that whole show. I, it, I loved it, but I also was like, I'm not really into talking about Christianity anyway, but I did it. I did it because I wanted the, I wanted both audiences to hear. This is what it means for two powerful people to come together and not throw vile and vile and hate at each other, like really have a connection. And throughout the show, you're on this journey with the two of them, definitely not arguing, but stating what they believe. And then them deciding to go hang out and go have lunch together because they live in the same city. And everybody listening heard that and they couldn't have come from more opposite directions. So I think People that are, can do that, that can be, that's why I love psychology. Cause when you know all this stuff about human behavior, like you, if you really know it, if you really know it, you, you can't stay stuck within your, within yourself, the human stuff. If you really know it, there are people that think they know it and they stay stuck. But I think that 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 empathy piece and that wanting to grow and learn and know other people and their suffering. And um, I think that that is a, a huge component. That's awesome. That's uh, that's awesome. That's like, 
you know, especially if you empathize with others. Mahato, what do you feel? What do you think of feel like some of the concepts that a person can incorporate or add that we would allow them to go wider? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question, and um, uh, I think it's it's a question that that we sh should all ask ourselves because uh, what every what it comes down to is uh, it's it's a party of one here. You know, we have the responsibility inside of ourselves to uh, do what we need to do to evolve and and. Uh, uh, you know, improve this world that, that we've come into. But I find that most people, and I'll include myself in that for many, many years, I felt uh, one of two things, either completely disempowered because I had been told, and I'm sure everybody else has been told, you have no power on your own. You need someone to be telling you what to do. You need somebody to tell you who God is, and you need somebody to uh, you know, be the go between between you and your deity, and also um, y you are you don't have enough. There's there's nothing about you that's special enough to make you your own person. You know, you have to understand that you are a spiritual being. You are a, a being with such incredible. Uh, power, and I don't like to use that word, but if every human being was aware of their power, number one, they'd be humble, and number two, there would be no more victimhood, which is another thing that I felt growing up. I was a victim, and I was powerless. And so you bring all of that into adulthood, and guess what? You are a very easily manipulated, tax-paying uh, uh, person who can be led around by the nose. First of all, it's easy to do that. You don't have to think. You just do what everybody tells you to do. Uh, people in power, people in authority. Uh, but once you start, I mean, if you're like me, you get ticked off at that and you go, wait a minute, what's going on here? This is wrong. I, I don't like any of this. And you start asking questions. And But when people begin to walk down the path of remembering who they really are, that spirit that is in the body animating this, this body, that's who you are, and, and then start asking questions such as, why am I here and what am I supposed to be doing? Uh, then you start understanding that you are not sheep. You are people who have the ability to tap into resources and understandings that are free to take. And when you begin to understand that, that you do have a certain amount of uh, freedom and ability, you're, it, it takes you out of fear in many cases, you know, uh, I, I can't think of too many things that, that frighten me anymore. Because it's like, well, what's the worst that could happen? I'm going to die? Well, I'm going home. That's win-win to me. So they, nobody has that over my head. That threat doesn't bother me. So, And it's only because I know who I am to a certain degree. But it, it makes sense. It makes absolute sense from, from every vantage point that each and every human being who is, is out there needs to stop for a minute and say, you know what? I don't like this fear. I feel like I'm being controlled. And they're using, whoever they are, is they're using fear to control me. And I don't like that. Right. So do some investigation. You know, who are you? And do you need to be in fear all the time? One of the things that Kristen and I do uh, a lot is and and we'll continue to do this because it's so important is to teach people there's no need for all of this there's no need for all of this fear you know scary things happen but if you go inside of your stuff and remember who you are you don't need it yeah, that's the biggest and thing is, martha the big thing i want to just emphasize that i'm sorry but no, listen listen listeners when she says remember who you are that is the only thing that that is the most powerful thing 
the most powerful tool that you can do for yourself in the world is to remember who you are and then be who you are. Right. David Icke says that a lot too. David David Icke always says, remember who you are. Remember who you are. That is so powerful. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not very mainstream. I mean, it's getting more mainstream these days, but when we were kids, we were never told who we were. Our parents didn't know who they were. Right. And and on and on, you know, back into, you know, generations. Who are we? We didn't know. So we were raised by people who were just as blind and ignorant as we were back then. And, and you know, I think about how I raised my kids and I thought, oh boy, if I could do that over again, I would. But, you know, there's always something to learn through all of these, these things. But remembering who you are is the best and most important thing that you can do. And, and, you know, I feel it's my job. And I know Kristen does feel that it's her job also to help people with that. Because if you can remember even a small sliver of, of who you really are, oh, your life will change. It will absolutely change. You'll take your power back. Yeah. No doubt. That, that fear that you have. I mean, remember Martha last year, how much fear I was in about money? Yeah. Oh my God. I just was, and, and, and no evidence to the contrary until there started to be evidence. And you know why? Because I was so afraid of it. That's all I thought about. Yeah. yeah. And I, I needed to go through whatever that was that yeah. was so wrapped up in fear. I needed to go to the nth degree of it before it finally, you know, this is a, this was generational stuff. This is all kinds of stuff. And I, I needed to finally, you know, get, that out. And I'm not saying it won't ever come up again or that it doesn't come up lightly, but the fear that I had about it just is not, is not there. And I don't look to the obvious as to how I sustain myself. I just right. know that I'm always taken <laughs> care of and I always am. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Awesome. And, and, you know, one thing that, that I teach my clients and, and I remember to do this myself too, when you're going through something like that, which is something that we will go through, you know, to heal all of this stuff. We have to experience it to heal it. And you, you can't heal something that's theoretical. It's got to be an in-your-experience thing. You walk up to it and say, you know, I'm afraid, but I'm going to do this anyway. And then you just keep walking. And the universe will conspire around that healing. And, and, you know, before too long, you will notice a change in your attitude, a change in your, in your uh, outlook about that particular thing, whatever it is, and, and just do it, just do it, you know, just jump and you won't be disappointed. That's terrific. I'd like to share a couple of quick things that I've uh, utilized. Maybe they could be helpful to some people mm-hmm. and, uh, one of the first things is I highly recommend anyone out there, if they haven't done so already, please start playing role-playing video games because there's some fundamental lessons that are in there that I think resonate deeply with life. Most role-playing video games, you start out as a character and you develop experience points by going through a number of battles. And throughout the course of the game, as you acquire these experience points, you can take on bigger and better enemies and you acquire more skills. And I didn't realize it until recently, but I feel like that is a fundamental lesson in life, that if you are able to go through more experiences, positive and negative, you acquire the tools necessary to deal with those experiences. And at the same time, you're also able to take on things that you hadn't done before earlier in your life. So I think that to look at it in a playful like manner, it can be very empowering. Also, a, a wonderful teacher that I used to work with, who's no longer with us, Stuart Wilde, used to say, do not do not defend it. Do not defend it. What he meant by that was you have all these beliefs that you know to be true unto you. There's no reason to ever defend them to another person. If a person says, I don't like your beliefs, so I'm going to question your beliefs, you already know what your beliefs are. So they're not going to convince you because they've you come to your own beliefs. And I think that by that, am I not feeling a front or threatened by that? It could be a really a big changer. Another thing is 
if you are always open to receiving new forms of information, you can never be stagnant or be right. stale. Well, that's yeah. exactly what you said, Martha. Mm -hmm. So if you're open to a new piece of information, another piece of information could be on its way to you or another insight could be on its way to you that will, will evolve you beyond this p position that you're in. And I believe that if you want to evolve beyond fear, if you don't wish to, to be in fear, if you don't wish to be in a position and you're open to new information, you will find a way there. It'll gravitate towards you naturally. So Absolutely. And, oh, and also always listen to your wife. That's the yes. best thing I'm going to do. Put that at the <laughs> top of say. the list. Do what she says. <laughs> <laughs> don't argue with her. No, oh. don't, don't, don't argue with my wife. Don't don't, 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 don't debate. Don't debate my wife. No, no. <laughs> Probably better, best not to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Although you know, I have to say, you know, some of my my biggest aha moments have come at the other end of a debate, and you know, with with someone right. I love or care about, and and uh, so as long as we're doing it with an open mind and an open heart, that's fine. You know, that's how we learn. And, and, you know, and I think to just a, a little add on to what you were saying, Ryan, is, you know, when you're open to, uh, you know, new information, you do get it, but let's expect new information. Right. This is not, you know, getting, getting guidance and inspiration and information from uh, our guides or whatever your belief is about that is something that you're, you're you're not just entitled to, it's something that you should expect. And, you know, we don't have to go around being humble and begging and, and supplicating for, for new information or, you know, inspiration or anything like that. You know, that's, that's part of the agreement. You know, we come here and our people on the other side that are in our team back us up. And and they will guide us and help us and give us inspiration when we need it. And we should expect that. And, and you know, we may not always know how it's going to show up, but we expect, I expect it. I expect it, you know, and you know, my team knows, you know, uh, when when I sit down with them and I say, OK, I don't know what this means. Please help me. I also know that the answer may not be what I expect it to be, but at least I know I'm going to get one. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. We don't, we don't need to beg for this stuff. This is, this is our right. Well, that's the amazing thing is that you can just ask. I mean, the yes. biggest, and also I think something else too, we don't tend to, you know, when you're someone who does question and you are open uh, are you, you know, you practice that openness, you tend to also just keep your head to the grinds to the, what is it? Grindstone? Is that what it's yeah. called? Okay. And you don't look up and see and check your progress. Like, yeah. uh, like Martha and I talked about last week that when a similar situation happens, different people, but it's a similar situation that you thought you'd healed from. It isn't necessarily that you've you know, gone backwards, you're just, this is just an opportunity for you to check your work. So yeah. I, I think of that in terms of, um, I'll give you an example. The other night, um, my neighbors were out and some of them, at, and they were all ready to party. Everybody was drinking and chatting and, and they all had a great time. And some of them are pretty heavy, you know, heavy drinkers. And I was invited to participate. And even up to a year ago, I probably would have participated. And now I'm like, eh, I don't really want to do that. It tends to be kind of gossipy. It tends to, you know, people can do stupid things when they're drinking like that. People are going to forget about social distancing, but I'm just going to, you know, go home. And I didn't think anything else of it until the next day I went, wait a minute, you need to really step back and look at how far you've come because I have lived in neighborhoods, one in particular, where I told Michael, we have to move because it is too easy to walk out that door at five o'clock and go party because this mm -hmm. is party central. And I made us move. And now instead of making us move, I have enough power and strength and all those things to, to be fine and non-judgmental about what anybody else wants to do, but also just to say no and go home. 
So you were able to make a decision about what you wanted to bring forward with you into the next moment. Exactly. And, and it wasn't involving alcohol. That's for sure. There you, there you go. But see, that's, that is a perfect example of, you know, self-observation, deciding what is, is helpful or not helpful, and, and then making a choice of whether or not you want to continue down that path. Right. And, and, and that is how you co-create your yes. own level of consciousness. Yes. And that's awesome. That's awesome. So if you're not sure whether or not you've, you've actually healed something, don't be surprised if that kind of a situation comes up again and it's not anybody doing anything to you. Right. It's you checking your work. Yep. And that you're, means you don't have to be afraid as we talk right. about fear here. You that's don't right. have to be afraid of checking your work. You don't. That's right. These, you know, I also look at, uh, it's real easy to get caught up in other people's bullshit. And we often get bored or because it's kind of fun, like we were talking about debating or whatever. We can get all invested in, in other people's journey of life. And sometimes that's part of our journey, too. And sometimes it's just, OK, you, time better spent maybe reading a book instead of getting all involved in that nonsense that you really don't care about anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like what am yeah. I what am I avoiding by getting up in arms over something that goes on down the street and yeah. who said what to who? Like I, I not what the news does. It's what they want. They want yes. you to, when, when the news tells you something, they want you to be upset and they say, Well, what can you can't do anything? So it's like, okay, you're upset and then you're disempowered. That's what I think. The, exactly. You're exactly yes. right. I, I agree with you. I think it's designed, right? Absolutely. The system is designed for that. But isn't that part of this testing ground? And isn't ascension really about, oh, okay, I see the matrix and I can punch holes through it easily. I can put my fingers through it easily because I'm the one with the power, not mm -hmm. this other stuff. So living in it, but not being uh, powered or driven by it and not being a victim of it absolutely yes 100 percent there yeah so yeah i mean <laughs> the thing about you know our experiences the ones that we label good the ones that we label bad they're all valuable and if we weren't meant to have them we wouldn't and there's something in every experience that that can help us to grow and remember who we are and when we begin to judge our experiences differently, mm -hmm. um, we are able to gain the benefit of those experiences rather than trying to fight with them. And, and yeah. um, uh, you know, I just recently had a, a health issue come up uh, last week, as a matter of fact. And um, it, it was it was a little difficult. It was very painful. And and I thought, hmm, OK, mm -hmm. what's this all about now? You know, what 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 am I trying to learn here? And, you know, if you if you go into it with that kind of an attitude, um, you're more likely to really grow from it and heal something from it. And rather than fighting with it and saying, oh, poor me, I'm a victim. Ah, you know, this hurts. Oh, what are we going to do? And why am I being punished? You're not being punished. You're learning something, you know. And so, uh, you know, like we were talking in the beginning, uh, Kristen, about, about this. Every, everything that we experience, whether it is what we would say pleasant or unpleasant, has something to teach us and if we move forward with the idea that we're learning things here then we're no longer a victim yeah it's awesome yeah we shouldn't be a victim can i just can i share with you guys a quick mental health hack that i've yeah. utilized yeah oh yeah this is probably not, this is not the, probably not the most positive one but i know some people say well you know i've got expectations i want to do this and that i have i have like no expectations for myself like, you know what because if i have like no expectations or low expectations and I see those expectations, then it's like, wow, look at you, go, go you. And some people say, oh, I'm going to do this and that. And then, 
and they, they don't do it, they get disappointed. If you have like low, no, low to no expectations, and you wind up doing beyond that, then you're already ahead of the curve. And I don't know. It's just <laughs> such I do. a Ryan thing to say. Oh my god. Well, it is. And my wife does that too. My wife, I tell my wife all the time. I said just, uh, she has. Um, I go, just don't don't have any expectations. And I tell my kid, my son is just point three months old. Like he's, ho- I'm holding him, and I was reading books mm-hmm. to him. And meanwhile, I'm telling him, like asking him who who he was, like who were you in a past lifetime, you know, where'd you come from. So she's like, you know, why don't you read him a bedtime story? So I'm like, I can't help it. But then I tell him, she goes, uh, she hears me walk. She walks by. She goes, what are you telling him? Uh, and I'm telling my son. I said, Daddy is probably going to screw everything up. You need to have low expectations because if I don't screw everything up, then I'm going to be a great daddy. Oh my God. <laughs> your poor There's your disclaimer. <laughs> There's a kid right there that was just born that is going to grow up with somebody saying, you're so. an indigo child. You have special gifts. <laughs> I don't gifts. know what, he, don't know know? what he, is. he just, he looks at me. Uh, he, uh, he, he looks at me. He just stares at me. He's like, oh my God. He's like, thank God. I think I, at least we have one responsible parent. Because your know, mommy's gonna have to do the job of two parents here. So oh, that's awesome! He looks at you and he goes, "I chose this." He goes, what? "I chose to have a daddy with two chins." Yeah. Goes, Did I really? Yes. He goes, yeah. I want. I want a two parent. I want a two parents, not a daddy. Not one daddy with two chins. So, I don't know. That's how he looks at me. How he looks oh at me. God, I oh, love it. that's yeah. awesome. It looks like we're we're out of time, so I wanted to thank. Uh, Christine, yes. Thank you both for being with us today. I mean, what, what are the best websites uh, to promote for everyone? Well, you start, Ryan. See, this is what happens when you interview another host because oh. then they because then they also watch the clock too because you can't freaking help it, can you, Ryan? You can't help it, which I, I love it. Ryan, yours first. Where can people sure. go to find uh, out? Two different. Well, uh, website is outerlimitsradio.com. And uh, the show is called The Outer Limits of Inner Truth. I love it. And everybody knows where to find us. Go to Facebook if you want to dive into that cesspool and find some light and go to Empowered Empaths Radio. Or you can go to mentalhealthnewsradionetwork.com and find us there. Thank you both. You're welcome. My pleasure. It was good to talk to you, Ryan. Yes, as always. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in to another episode of Empowered Empaths. Hi, listeners. I'll make it quick. These are some really cool places that give discounts and other cool things for listeners of Mental Health News Radio Network. If you want to get amazing help with healing from narcissistic abuse, go to healfromanarcissist.com. If you want CBD products that are the best of the best, I use them myself, go to pros, P-R-O-Z-E dot com and use the code mentalhealth20, mentalhealth20. If you want to get daily perk ups that help retrain your brain to think more positively, go to perkupdaily.com. And also, just because this one's fun, snarkycandles.com. I guarantee you'll love them. Snarky with a Y, S N A R K Y, candles.com. And don't forget, if you want to hear all the shows on the network about first responders, you can go to firstrespondermentalhealthnetwork.com and all of our shows that focus on narcissistic abuse narcissistic abuse healing network.com thanks for listening and back to the show I'm passive aggressive but never without good intentions I heat up and act on my emotions thanks so much for listening to mental health news radio our podcast can be found on iTunes Stitcher and hundreds of other podcast apps or you can visit our website at mentalhealthnewsradio.com. If you have a question or would like to be a guest, become a podcaster on our network, or join the amazing organizations that help keep us on the air, please email us at info at mhnrnetwork.com. Get ready for that special goodbye from our resident therapy dog, Miles, and a special thanks to Emily Sohn for letting us use her incredible song, Cordial, for our podcast music. Listen to the full song on SoundCloud at emily.sonne. Don't be surprised when I don't hate on you. After all we promised, we'd be cordial. Sometimes in you, I can fight. Good boy.